Welcome to our Food Safety Partnership Panel. I'm Karen Gully, Environment and Health County Manager with Cobb and Douglas Public Health. A couple of times a year, we form a panel, just as we have done today, to discuss food safety issues. And they're looked at from the perspective of the health department, the food industry, and the consumer. Today on our panel, we have Joyce Simmons Celestin from Superior Catering in Cobb County. She's the owner. Dwight Burke, owner of Burt's Grill in Douglas County. And we have Jasmine Flemings. She's our consumer. So welcome to today's panel. We're really glad that you're able to take time out and come and share with us today. So we're looking forward to hearing from you. According to the Journal for Food Protection, most foodborne disease outbreaks reported to the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention actually have been associated with eating in restaurants and delis. Now that might sound kind of alarming when you first hear a statement like that, but really we're gonna put that into perspective. So think about this, Jasmine. Now uh, considering just the lifestyles of persons in America today, what do you think? Uh, do you think persons eat more of their meals in the home or out of the home? Although eating in the home would probably be a more healthier option, I believe that most Americans today eat outside of the home because of the convenience and it being cost effective. In the past, I would frequently eat out because of it being simply faster. But now, given what I've learned, I prefer to prepare my food in the home. That way I can ensure that the food is prepared properly and it will prevent the, the possibility of foodborne illness. Oh, okay, all right, so you really look out for that in the home too as well. Okay, well good. And that's what, you know, we all have, we should be doing that anyway as far as looking out for that food safety. Now, in 1970, the United States Department of Agriculture actually reported that Americans spent about 25% of their family's uh, food budget on eating outside of the home. Today, how much do you think they spend about what? Much higher. Yeah, they spend over 50% eating outside of the home. And so that's one of the reasons why we really want to um, to really think about and concentrate on what we call risk factors for foodborne illness. Those factors that can really affect the spread of foodborne illnesses the most. And so that's what we're gonna be concentrating on. Now, a couple of episodes ago, we actually introduced risk factors uh, for disease to our viewers. And when we say risk factors, that's the term that the Centers for Disease Control, CDC, uh, what they have determined to be the top five causes of foodborne illnesses, most of the foodborne illnesses that have been reported to them in the United States. And so that's been pretty consistent uh, over the past years. And so uh, we want to look at controlling those risk factors. And a couple of episodes ago, we introduced those risk factors to our viewers. So we wanna just go ahead and recap now for them, I'm gonna ask my um, uh, food service operators to help me out. So let's think about the five top risk factors or causes for foodborne illnesses. Um, will you get us started, Joyce? Sure, um, the first one would be purchasing food from unsafe sources. Um, and then the other one would be inadequate cooking. Okay, all right, what about you? And there's two that I take a lot of uh, uh, precedence in at the restaurant because we're meeting too is improper holding temperatures and time and temperature of use. Right, yeah, and very important. Every one of those is important. And then we uh, wrap up the last ones. We have using contaminated equipment or prevention of contamination and then personal hygiene. Every one of those is important. Have you ever worked in a food establishment, Jasmine? Yes, I have. Oh, yeah. okay. I worked in a, um, a, a fast food restaurant when I was 16. And although I love my job then, now that I've learned about food safety, I feel like there were a lot of issues with contamination and poor hygiene. For instance, um, a lot of the staff weren't taught proper hand washing, mm -hmm. and I, it wasn't stressed, the, imp the, the importance of it wasn't stressed. Uh, there were a lot of staff that didn't wear hair nets when preparing food, which would pop probably lead to hair being in a customer's food. Um, as far as preparation, 
There were food items that were reused several times that should have been thrown away, um, as well as not checking the temperature of the food to ensure that it meets the standard to prevent foodborne illness. Okay, so you just <laughs> listed quite a few of those risk factors. So that's why it's so important that we uh, really see how our establishments are doing in regards to the risk factors. Now, um, we know that you put a lot into controlling risk factors in your particular establishments, and we're gonna be talking about that. But it's something that we did in reference to uh, just assessing risk factors better, just trying to get uh, an idea of just how well we were doing as far as when we go in assessing as well as the operators, how well they are doing as far as controlling those risk factors. So what we did, now this was something that is not required, the state doesn't require us to do risk factor studies, but this is something we really wanted to do because we want to you know, really make the program and our facilities the best they can be. And so we ended up um, contacting the FDA. They gave us guidance in setting up the risk factor study in Cobb and Douglas, we have over 2,300 food service establishments. That's a lot of facilities. And so they help determine based on the types of um, food service establishments we have. And the number, they gave us some um, data back. We gave them what we had in every category and they gave us some data back. And so it was found that we needed to go ahead and assess at least two, 290 of those food service establishments. And we did do that over, uh, it took from March of 2017 until April of 2018 to really look at those risk factors in a deeper sense because they actually provided certain questions that we had to answer in reference to the assessments of those particular facilities and those risk factors. So it really helped us out a lot. And so once we finished that, study, then we were able to put everything into what they call the food shield. Okay, is this electronic database? And it gave us back a lot of information that was really interesting. And we found out that there are certain areas that we really do need to concentrate on more. And so that's good because we know where we need to put our focus. And so over the next year, that's what we're gonna be doing. And the operators, you'll be hearing more about it. And even in today's program, you'll hear more about what we're gonna be doing. And so just so you know, uh, once we looked at the results, we found out that our biggest areas of uh, attention, areas that we need to put more attention into are improper cold holding. Okay, that was, that was found consistently quite a bit. Cleaning and sanitizing equipment the right way, effectively and then also employee health policy compliance. Okay, that's one of our, um, what we call public health interventions. It helps support uh, the areas of personal hygiene, things like that. Okay, and so that's really important. So we recognize again, that you're already doing a lot as far as operators in your establishment. You're looking on the lookout all the time for different areas. I know you are, because I, I know you have good records as far as how you, you know, try to maintain compliance in your establishments. Now, depending on the type of facility, we know that there are specific challenges that you're faced with. Joyce, you have a catering operation. And so tell us some of the um, challenges that you have that maybe other restaurant operators might not. Go ahead. Well, in the restaurant industry, it's all food service, but I'm looking at the fact that we are preparing food at our location and now we're getting ready to transport it from our premises to another site. Mm -hmm. And in that, the first and most important thing is to have a site inspection to know what we're about to be faced with. Um, do they have the proper hand sink, washing sinks, refrigeration, holding units? And we have to thoroughly think about how we're gonna transport the food items, whether it's cold or hot, and what the plans are to maintain the proper temperatures. From thermostat to insulated cambros and units to ensure that it's gonna be held properly until consumption by the consumer. <laughs> Okay, so that means you have to do your homework yes. because sometimes uh, you're going to a facility, say you find out they didn't even have a hand wash nope. sink. So how would you In the case that they that? don't have a, a hand washing unit, um, what you're supposed to do is similar to like an igloo. 
Um, you get an igloo container that's insulated with warm water. You transport that and you have to have a five gallon bucket so when you're watch, washing and you have the spigot, you can still wash your hands properly. And a lot of times that takes place also for concessions and all of these places that's having these concerts and different vendors that's outdoors, they have to basically do the same thing because that's technically a catering um, um, procedure that they're doing. They're not at a restaurant anymore, they've now moved completely off the premises, but you still got to operate accordingly. That's right, because hand washing is right. really important. And like you said, that's exactly what um, operators have to do if they have temporary right. food events. Right. It's true. Now, um, quite often, you know, thinking about temperature control and cold holding, because that came up quite a bit. Yes, it's, it's a mm -hmm. Right. Now, uh, one thing in restaurants, and I don't get in the actual facilities as often as I would like to now, but uh, consistently looking at the reports and just when I go out, this has just been so common over the years as far as the uh, main areas that you're finding temperature not been maintained properly. Uh, for one, that area right across from the grill, okay? You have your prep unit usually right across from the grill because it's convenient. You turn around, get what you need, and get right back to the grill. And we understand that, but it's really important to maintain those food temperatures. Dwight, what do you do to help control some of those factors? I know with ours, is, I'm, I'm really particular about that. They, at the end of the night, they'll put thermometers in. We always keep at least four thermometers in our, on our salad bar and they're always in the front four containers. They're as far back from where the actual cold air comes from. If I know the front four are cold, I know the ones are in the back are gonna hit the right temperatures. We get our equipment maintained every 90 days. Someone comes in, checks the Freon, make sure the fan's right, puts a new filter to make sure it's dust free. But I have him turn it down to freezer capacity. It's at 32, not 40. Mm. So it, that helps take care of that variance when it's in volume the temperature doesn't sway too far from, from where it should be. And we're really, really particular about that. We, we try to prep in small portions all the time. And they have a little mark on the container, hot and cold containers. When I was in culinary school, the, the instructor tried to keep it simple. He says, that's an idiot line from mm -hmm. you idiots. <laughs> he says, don't fill past this. You have an air gap in there and then the temperature stays right. Keep the top on it, you keep the temperature better. So things like that built to the industry helps. Right, exactly, because those field lines are important. And quite often, persons go above it because why? They don't want to have to keep getting more product. So they'll go ahead and fill it up. But no, it can work against you because sometimes you can't use it fast enough. Now, we have come up with some intervention strategies that we will be implementing over the next year or so in our food establishments. For example, one of the most common pieces of equipment marked as being out of compliance in our food establishment has been found to be the ice machine. A lot of times we take this for granted, but ice can actually become contaminated and cause diseases such as Legionella, norovirus, Salmonella. Quite often the front of the machines are wiped down, but yet persons forget to schedule the insides of the machines for cleaning, so we need to make sure we keep those clean. All of those are important, so to help with cold holding in our facilities, one of the things that we're going to be doing over the next year, and we'll continue, I know, as far as when we do plan reviews, for instance, we're going to put more emphasis on looking at the placement of the equipment, and if you have for instance, a prep line that has your cold holding right across from the cook line, we're gonna definitely engage our operators more, get them to think right up front, how are we gonna really maintain the temperatures in those units? And we have some um, action plans and things like that that we can work out with them, but we wanna do this ahead of time. And for those that are already in operation, take time out and look at the placement of your equipment and like, uh, you were saying as far as the field line and just uh, how things are set up and make it easier, easier, uh, the easier you can make it, especially on the workers, the better. So uh, take time out to look at things like that. But we're going to have some other intervention strategies as well. We're going to do an employee health intervention and, is, and that's one that we're going to put a lot of emphasis on. And we know in certain situations, if employee health had really been stuck to with the principles of that, 
um, some of these things could have been helped in a lot of ways. And so we want all our operators to have really good employee health policies. And so we're going to concentrate on that. We'll be giving, our goal is to get this in the hand of most of our operators. It is called the Employee Health Red Book. Our state office of environmental health and Depar department of public health in georgia they actually uh, introduced those to us they put those together and they actually piggybacked off of a health department in virginia okay and so they were willing to share that information and we definitely were willing to make more copies for our operators because it's really good it goes through all five areas of an employee health policy we're going to make sure try to ensure that everybody really understands what those areas are. So that's really good. And so right now we're gonna take a quick pause. We're gonna listen to one of our inspectors because we're excited about something that we're getting ready to implement in our facilities. We'll listen to her and we'll come right back. Hello, I am environmental health specialist, Kim Brown from Cobb and Douglas Public Health, here to inform you about a special employee health and hygiene campaign that we're implementing. We will be sharing tools, like this one, along with information throughout the campaign that will help food service management and staff to understand the required components of an employee health policy and good personal hygienic practices because the people factor is very important to controlling foodborne illness. There will be opportunity for individual and facility recognition. For example, persons in charge of food service facilities that have approved employee health agreements in place and have passed our online exam demonstrating their understanding of the employee health requirements will have their name of their facilities added to a list posted on our website of employee health achievers and receive a certificate for posting in their establishment. So stay tuned and hope you will be an employee health achiever. So we're really excited about the employee health campaign. We really are. And I think the operators and our staff, even the public, they'll get something out of it because we're going to put more tools on our website. We'll be talking about it more on our food safety blog. And we're just going to be putting that out there. And so we can answer a lot of questions that persons may have because a lot of times you hear employee health, but you aren't really, you know, really understanding what it's all about. And so we're looking forward to that employee health campaign and hopefully you'll be a part of it and your names will be on our list of employee health achievers. We're looking forward to seeing those certificates go up in the restaurants and we want our public to be looking out for those going up because we want as many restaurant operators, food service operators as possible to be employee health achievers, to have that down pat. Okay, so we're really looking forward to that. And we will have um, operations listed on our, our website. Um, so persons can actually be able to say, hey, yes, I'm listed as an employee health achiever. So looking forward to that. So that, that is great. So that, that's, that's excitement uh, for us, exciting for us, I should say, and looking forward to the upcoming year. So the thing is that we want to hear from the operators as well. So if you think of something along the way that you think could go better or that would help in this campaign, please share it. We want you to share it. Okay, that's very important. So we have to go ahead and wrap up today's discussion, but thank you so much for sharing with us. And thank you, our viewers, for taking the time out to share with us today, to listen. And we want you to be employee health achievers as well. For more information about what we spoke about today, feel free to look at our website, go to our website, and you also can be members of our food safety blog just by putting in your email address. You can follow and stay up to date on the things that are current issues in food safety, especially our employee health campaign. So be a part, take time to do that. And also, if you think about something that you would like to hear us discuss on our food safety partnership panel, let us know that. And if you would like to be one of our panelists, just go ahead and contact us. Our information is on the screen. So whether at home or in a food service establishment, keep the control of risk factors for foodborne illnesses in mind. Think about those, look back at our website and concentrate on controlling those risk factors when you have uh, food that you're preparing yourself. 
Please remember to be informed, stay alert, and always think food safety. See you next time. Bye. Thank you.